There's a pretty wild situation unfolding in Russia tonight. The White House says it is monitoring. It all started earlier this evening when that man, uh, Putin's chef, Evgeny Prigozhin, the head of a Russian-affiliated mercenary group that's been fighting in Ukraine, appeared to release a video on social media accusing Russian military leaders of misleading the country and its president, Vladimir Putin, over the initial reasons for the invasion of Ukraine itself. Then Prigozhin followed up, apparently by posting a series of audio messages on the social media platform Telegram, claiming the Russian minister of defense had personally overseen an attack on his fighters using artillery and helicopters, adding that, quote, huge numbers of his men have been killed and vowing to punish those involved, threatening to march his troops on the Ministry of Defense in Moscow. Russian state media reports the state security service, the FSB, opened a criminal case against the mercenary leader, quote, accusing him of calling for an armed rebellion, attempting to start armed civil conflict in Russia. The FSB also called on Prigozhin's men to detain him. Russian civilians also saw emergency broadcasts cut into regular programming, asserting that Prigozhin's claims were false and reading a Kremlin statement demanding the mercenary leader stop his, quote, unlawful actions immediately. NBC News foreign correspondent Raf Sanchez is monitoring the situation live from Kiev in Ukraine tonight, and he joins me with the latest. Raf, this is a confusing situation with lots of people who we can't necessarily take at their word, but what's the best of what we can determine at this moment? Chris, it is nearly 3.30 in the morning here in Kyiv. It's the same time in Moscow. This is a fast-moving and confusing situation. But here's what we know. In the last few minutes, the White House National Security Council has confirmed President Biden has been briefed on what's going on inside Russia, which tells you just how high the stakes are here. As you said, the Russian government is now accusing Evgeny Prigozhin, the volatile head of the Wagner mercenary group, of mounting a coup against the the government of Vladimir Putin. Prigozhin, for his part, having earlier said that the Russian military fired on his mercenary troops, has now released an audio recording in just the last hour or so saying his mercenaries have crossed over from Ukraine, where they are supposed to be fighting side by side with Russian regular forces, and that they are marching towards the southern Russian city of Rostov. Chris, as you said, there are not a lot of reliable narrators here. Prigozhin is a man with a history of exaggeration. There is no firm evidence at this point that a column of his troops is indeed advancing towards Rostov. But the Kremlin is not taking any chances. This is a government that appears to be preparing for a military coup. Russian state media says the government has tightened security in Moscow and in other cities. And, Chris, this internal fighting inside Russia, Chris, you may be able to hear the air defense here in Kyiv is going off, which shows you that even as the Russians are turning on each other, either with words or with guns, as Prigozhin says, the war here in Ukraine continues to rage, Ukrainian forces mounting that long-awaited counteroffensive, and they are now hoping here in Kyiv that they are facing an enemy divided amongst themselves. Chris? Uh, Raf Sanchez uh, in Kyiv tonight. Thank you so much. That was a great update. Uh, I want to go now to Masha Gessen, a staff writer at The New Yorker who's been writing about Putin's Russia for years, wrote an incredible biography of Putin. So, Masha, we've been covering this on the show. Prigozhin is this strange figure. He's called Putin's chef. He ran a catering business. He's named in the Mueller indictments as the person that essentially oversaw the efforts to uh, disrupt the 2016 election in, in, in certain cases. He runs this Wagner group, which is deployed in Syria and all other places, in Mali, uh, as mercenaries. He has been releasing these increasingly antagonistic videos over months going after Sergei Shoigu, who runs the Russian military. And there's this question of, like, is this real? Is it performance? But this looks real now, yes? Oh, I think it's always looked real, right? Um, I mean, this is what we've been looking at is Prigozhin is a very scary man. Yes. Uh, and he has been he's served as Putin's enforcer. He has served as Putin's shock troops. Uh, he's wielded uh, private armies in Syria and now in Ukraine. And he's grown exasperated, and his exasperation has been basically uh, reflected in what seems to be real time on Telegram over the last few weeks especially. And the Ministry of Defense and the presidential administration has retaliated by basically telling him that he should 
know his place, and um, effectively trying to get his private army under control, to, to get it subsumed by the Ministry of Defense once Prigozhin got a little bit too uppity. Mm. This is Prigozhin's reaction today. Uh, he, he has gone from criticizing Putin for not being decisive enough and not throwing enough resources at this war to saying, look, there was no reason to wage this war in the first place. You have been lied to, you, my mercenaries, you, uh, conscripted men, you, the Russian people, have been lied to. There's no point in running, uh, in, in fighting this war. People are getting, getting killed for nothing. And he has called on people to march to Moscow to restore justice. So this is very explicitly an attempt on military coup. It may very well fail, right? Most military coups fail. Uh, a lot of military coups that succeed have looked less serious, less uh, certainly uh, more ridiculous than this one, right? And um, and now we enter a territory of totally unreliable information. Uh, we know there's uh, there's military equipment in the streets of Moscow, which is what you're showing right now. We seem to know that the president, the building of the presidential administration in Moscow, has been sealed off. Uh, there are reports that Prigozhin's troops are entering Russia easily through the border, even though there is a warrant out for his arrest. But apparently, from what they're saying, right, and, and from what may or may not be independent reports, the border guard are waving them right through. Is it because they're uninformed, or is this not really happening? We don't know. The, the, the Prigozhin, I mean, the, the, the video he posted at the beginning about the origins of the war was, was fascinating. Um, he had been, as you said, he was sort of a critic of the war from the right, basically that, that the, the Russian military uh, ministry of defense and Shoigu had, they, were, they, they weren't throwing their, their back into it, right? Like he's out there, his men are fighting and dying, and, and you guys aren't really committed to this war. Today he says basically... You've been lied to about the origins of it. It was because we had basically taken everything we could from the Donbass, eastern Ukraine, and the Russian elite grew greedy. That this was essentially like a, this was conquest. It wasn't defensive. NATO was never coming in. I mean, a real, like, complete refutation of the story told about the war. Yeah, and I think this is, um, the, the, this is actually important to the larger picture. We have no way of knowing how viable this attempt at a military coup is, right? Yeah. These things are so strange, and they really, you know, um, they really depend not so much on military force uh, or even public support. They depend in a kind of uh, game of nerves and credibility, right? So, mm -hmm. so we, we don't know how this is going to turn out. But the larger point is that, you know, anybody who ultimately overturns Putin, uh, because there, there are two ways that, the, that Putinism can end, right? Either Putin dies or there's a coup. Yeah. So if there's a coup, even if it, is, if it is staged by a hardliner, it's going to be a hardliner for whom it's not his war. And that's uh, what we're seeing now is an illustration of that thesis. And this is something really important to keep in mind, because if he succeeds, it's good news for Ukraine. It's not his war. Yeah. Um, it's not like Russia doing poorly in a war has ever led to the uh, government falling before. So it, it, it would be the first time, of course, Masha Gessen. Uh, thank you so much for. <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate it.